between ano ang pagkakakilala ng mga tao sa iyo sa totoo ikaw sa pagkakaintindi mo para sa sa iyo. Tigeta? A conflict between who people think you are and who you really think you are. But none of them are actually reality. Because who you think you are is your opinion about yourself. And who people think you are is their opinion about you. Yeah. Yet they're not both realities, they're just opinion that you've made up. Yes. The meaning people put on you, and the meaning you actually attach to your situation that now you have concluded about yourself. What I really want you to rediscover is your master identity. Who you really are. Yes. You get that? Yes. But we need to have an idea of who we have thought we are. Because you will not be able to discover who you really are unless you know how your mind works as to who you thought you have become, as to who you thought you are. Okay? Now, according to psychologists, there are three elements to your self-identity. Oh, let's watch that. This is a very good video. All right? Please prepare the sound. Now, you get conflicted about your social identity, perceived identity. But what you need to recapture is actually your master identity. And there's a very nice video for that. Let's watch this video. That's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. You see, he lives in you. actually a master identity that is the key to success that is the key to significance yet we have forgotten our identity because of so many circumstances we've went through in our life we've gone through in our lives right yes. and we seem to have layers and layers of identity that are too far from who we really are and that is exactly what we want to recover the Bible says that we are created in the image and likeness of God Yes, I'm a scientist, but I also believe in the Bible. And the more I study neuroscience, the more I actually find proof that verses in the Bible can be supported by science. And the truth is, we are created in the image and likeness of God, and it's always been inside of you. And it's something that we need to recapture. But you know, the journey towards discovering that is so difficult. Ask me why. Why? Because we have layers of identity that we have placed upon ourselves because of careless meaning, careless definitions we've made about ourselves. And we have convinced ourselves that we are limited, that we are like this, that we are bugo, that we are a failure, that we are weak, and all of that. Get that? 
That's why we never get to find who we really are because it's only when you find your master identity that you will have unwavering strength and determination to move forward in your life. You get that? Yeah. Harvard University actually made a study of people who had enduring success until they died. And these are people who did not just accomplish something, right? And they found out that this one particular intelligence they call is actually, you know, it's not IQ. It's not EQ. It's not AQ or adversity quotient. But enduring success are created by people with spiritual quotient. In other words, they have the capacity to find the right meaning, the most empowering meaning in spite and despite of their circumstances. But first we need to have an awareness of how we have really defined, defined ourselves based on our perceived identity and our social identity. You get that? And again, in this process, what we want to do is we want it to move from here Right? Say on subconscious to your cortical levels so that you become aware of them. In the process, you might cry. In the process, you might think this has been limiting me. But I think the greatest breakthrough in crying that would happen is because you realize that apparently, ang imong gituan ni ikaw is only an opinion that you've made up. And you have convinced yourself for so many years, ngayong anak ka, ngayong anak lang ka. Are we here? Yes. And that is what we want to lift up, I mean, to dislodge from your subconscious, take it to your conscious, so you can deal with it right now. All right? Now, there are three elements to your self-concept. One is your self-ideal. Self-ideal is so powerful because this is who you think you can be. God is so good that He always leaves that feel, that's, you know, a sense of greatness that we think we have inside. Do you feel that? Yes. Now, in spite of the spite of what happens in your life, hold on the hope because there is always a sense of greatness inside of you that if only you could tap into it, your life would be different. Who would feel that? It's a nakafeel na sa mo. Nakana na agu kay kabalo ka nga naapay ikabuga. Nakai feeling na pa magi lahi ng orang wak panako na higawas. And if only I could tap to it, my life will totally change. Did you, do I have that? Yes. Do you have that sense? Yes. Raise your hand if you have that sense. Of course, everybody has that because we have an enduring spirit inside of us and that is where it's deposited. However, uh, however, self-ideal apparently can be can put on a lot of pressure on us. You get that? And I'll explain that where that kind of self-ideal is coming from, not the real one that's coming from your master identity. The second element of how we define ourselves is self-image. This is who you think you have become. This is patong-patong ng mga meaning ay mong gibutan that this is who I am. And that's your self-image. Now, you function in a certain way. This is the combination of your social image or self-concept, I mean, social identity as well as your perceived identity and you tell others this is who I am, right? Nagkuha na siya, nagsynthesize together. Self-esteem is actually how you feel about yourself. Now, it becomes disempowering to you which means it could also damage you when your, especially your performance, when your self-esteem is so low, when your relationship with yourself is so low. Get that? And the reason why your relationship with yourself becomes low is because you are self-conflicted. Are we here? Right? You know who you are, you know who you can be, but yet in the present, and no matter how much I try, I don't become the person who I should be. Do you have that feeling? And it could suck a lot of your energy, right? potential. You don't like people to treat you with all your mistakes because you know your potential. That is where you know a sense of hope is coming from. But you are self-conflicted because in the present, kasi mo self-ideal. Yes or yes? Yes. And that goes to self-esteem. Now, sometimes for some people, they become very depressed. All right. Because if they start to think, or very unhappy, when they start to think that their self-ideal and self-image are irreconcilable. There's no point of reconciling them. When you think that this is how, this is who I should be, and yet what I'm turning out to be, and then people lose hope, right? That's why they get depressed. 
Because the person that they want to be and the person that they have become are already far apart. Hello? Hi. And you're stuck. And people start to live according to survival instead of growth because there's nothing to look forward anymore. And I tell you, even if you are silent right now, your gestures will tell me that a lot of you are in that stage. You are frustrated about yourself. Yes. Right? And out of that frustration, you made some limitations in the form of definitions about you. So that you have an explanation. So that Why? you can finally say, Okay, makuntento na lang ko. Ing ani lang yun ko. Di na lang ta mangarap ani. Mao na lang yun ni. Kanina lang yun. But yet you are unhappy at the end of the day because kabalukan nga napag yung kaikabuga. Yes. Come on. Right? So a lot of you apparently, according to psychologists, if your self-esteem is low, your performance is low. Why? Because your energy is taken by something else. It goes somewhere else instead of getting yourself focused on something that you are building. Hello? Hi. And that's why you're not getting a breakthrough in your business. And a lot of you could get a breakthrough at one point and then lose it the next day. Right? Right? And it's not your fault. Because our school system is created so that we would have achievement but not success. Success is a journey, not a destination. Achievement. You're trained to actually chase achievement but not success. Are we here? Are we here? Yes. That's why you have a very bad relationship with failure. When you fail, you think it's the end. Successful people are never like that. When they fail, they call it not failure, but they call it feedback. Right? Right? So, what I want you to do right now is I want you to find a partner. This time, you bring in your number, and I want you to face your partner right now. 